Did you know you can animate objects using iMovie only? A lot of people don't think that's possible using iMovie, and I'm going to show you how to do it. All right, welcome back to the channel. And if you're interested in just learning the basics of iMovie, I have a lot of videos on iMovie. Just, I guess what I would do is search my channel for iMovie. I have tutorials, little ones and big ones, but I'm gonna make more of a, a bigger one soon. But this is just another tip. If you're looking to animate objects in iMovie, a lot of people think you have to use something like Keynote and do a green screen, move things around and then add it to iMovie. And actually that is a good, good way to do it for sure. I actually have a video on that. You can do it that way as well. You can animate in Keynote, you know, take a green screen on, on the background, drop it into iMovie, and then it'll move. But the problem with that is it's, it's hard to match up kind of what you're moving, especially if there's a video in iMovie and you have to, there's just a lot of complications to it, but it's probably even more powerful than what's built into iMovie. But if you just want to go ahead and you want to move something very simply on the screen using iMovie, and you want it to kind of, let's just, I'm going to show you an example of a plane moving across maybe continents or something. If you want to do something like that, it's actually built into iMovie, and you can use keyframes for that. A lot of people don't know how to do this, so without further ado, we're going to get into it. So if you like iMovie and you just want to learn a little bit about it, I'm going to show you one tip that's going to make things that you probably didn't think you could do, and you could be able to do it. It's simple. It's not the most advanced or anything like that, but you can do it, and that's the bottom line. If you want to move objects around in your iMovie or you know wherever on top of you or whatever you wherever you want to put it, it's very easy. So let's get into this video, and I'm going to share my screen here. All right, so here's iMovie. It's very straightforward. I'm going to show you how to do this in just a couple little steps here. So what I have is I have a background image. You can see it down here. It's about let me see here five seconds long only. But here's the background image. It doesn't move. You can see it, and it's a world map. So what I want to do is I want to show a plane moving from maybe the United States over to Europe. So what I'll do is, second thing you need is, the second image I have up here, it's just a, it's a plane, but it's got a transparent background. You can't really tell because it's black, but get an image with a transparent background just so it floats on top. So let me go ahead and add this. I'm gonna take this image here and I'm gonna drag it over the timeline just like that, right? You can see it's in there. Now, why is it moving? Well, click on it, first of all. It's moving because you wanna go up here and you wanna go to this little icon, cropping, click on that. It's in Ken Burns, so that's actually not what you want. You want to just click Fit here. See that? So click Fit on it. And then the next step you want to do is go over to this one over here, this little icon up here. It's called Video Overlay Settings, and you want to click on that. And the next thing you want to do is go over here and go down to Picture and Picture. So that's the next step. So make it Picture and Picture. And then don't touch anything yet. And then up here you'll see that there's now a Dissolve. Just make this zero. You don't want this to dissolve in or out. You want this just to be straight. So just make that a zero. This will make sense in a second. All right, so now that it's picture in picture, I can take this and I can drag it around, you know, as far as wherever I want to start the location at, right? So I said I want to start in the United States here. You know, you can actually go in and resize this, make this smaller or bigger. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller just because it's taking up most of the map here. But I'm just going to leave it about that size right there. And you can see there's a little box around it. That's because I've selected this down here. If I select the bottom layer, you're going to see it goes away. If I select the top layer, since I have this picture in picture, you can see that it's got the box around it. The good thing about this is when you have the box around this and you have it in picture in picture, you're going to notice right here in the corner, there's this little icon up here. It looks like a you know a triangle with a plus in it. This is keyframes. And this is really interesting. It's just unusual how you have to do this. So let me just show you how you do it. And then we can go from there. It's just something you have to learn and go through the process. But it's very easy, but it's just easy to screw up. So the next thing you want to do is, so the plane's here. All right, so what you want to do now is you want to go ahead and click on the timeline. I'm going to click right, double click right there. And I'm going to leave that line there. See how that line stayed there? And I want to leave that. That's where the plane's going to start, where that line is right there. And if you notice, I want to make sure that it's still got the box around it. All right. So what we're going to do then is we're going to click the keyframe right here just one time, just like that. And you're going to, then you're going to notice that it went from a plus to a, to like a, a, a X now. If I click that, it'll remove the keyframe. But I didn't move anything yet, right? Well, you don't move anything yet. So what you want to do is really simple: is you move to the part in the timeline over here um, where you want the actual plane. To kind of, like you know, you basically move to the timeline where the plane should end up. So here's where it started this line. Over here, I want it to end up. I'll show you. This will make more sense in a second. So I'm going to click here now. You can see way over here. Then I'm going to take the plane and move it to Europe. See that over here? And I'm going to let go of it. Now what you can do then is if you go back over here and play this frame, I want to show you what it actually did. So right off the bat, it's going to start moving right when I start started it, and it's going to stop 
in the keyframe where I stopped it. So you notice what I did there. I went ahead and you can see in the in the video that it's now moving. But the key there was you have to actually click, you know, you have to you know, always click on here and then make sure that you, let me just do that again. You have to click on here and then you have to actually set the keyframe and click plus on it. Then you have to move down here to where you want it to end up. And then you have to go ahead and you move the plane but you don't want to actually click the plus again. A lot of people click the plus again, or they, they, you know, they, they end up moving it and clicking the plus, but you just move it and the keyframe's already there. So that's the key there. So now we're over here, you can see in the timeline where the plane stops, right? And the plane stops, let me just see, if I play this, it stops right about there. So now, if we want to move again, I'll click right here, you can see in the timeline, I'm clicking right where the plane has stopped, so right, you'll see the line that stays there. I'm going to take this, and I'll, here's the plane. I'm going to click another keyframe. See that? Now I'm going to move down here to where I want it to end, at the end of this here. So right about here, I'm going to click there. And you see that the line stayed there. And then I'm going to move the plane again. So by doing that, I'm going to first move from here. It's going to go from the United States to Europe, and then from Europe over to uh, South America. So let's go back here, and let's play it. So there it goes. It's moving over to Europe. It's going to quickly go over to South America. I did it really quickly, and then it fades away, obviously, because the timeline comes out. So you get the idea. That's how you do an animation. You can do it with any overlays or anything like that. I just wanted to show basic animation and how to use that keyframe feature. So you let me know in the comments if this makes a lot of sense. This is the easiest thing to do, and it adds, you know, you can add a bunch of animations or moons floating around or just text moving and stuff like that to your iMovie videos. And it's a lot easier than, you know, trying to do it through Keynote, which you can easily do with green screens. But this is just one step, and I just wanted to show people how to do it. All right, so what do you think about that? I think that's actually pretty cool, right? You, you know, a lot of people just don't even know that exists. They get into iMovie, and especially me. I mean, when I first started, I just kind of stayed within my little box, and I just knew the features that I knew, and I didn't kind of expand, or I didn't do any research, and I didn't know things existed. I always thought you had to do it in Keynote to make animations or make movement of objects and stuff like that. So it's a lot easier than you think. It's built in. You can do it. I mean, obviously, this is not Final Cut Pro. This is not going to be nearly as powerful. But if you put your mind to it and you take a little bit more time, you always can do the same effects. Not always, but, but sometimes using iMovie. And it's free, and you can get started, and then you can migrate and pay the 300 bucks, get Final Cut Pro, and start learning you know, more full-fledged uh, video editing. So if you like the Macs and you like the iMovie free version and you want to get started like in YouTube or anything like that, it's a great way. So let me know what you guys think. Hopefully you guys can like this video. I got 400 and something videos on Max and it's growing. I got, you know, I'm going up to 10,000 subscribers. So, so subscribe if you can. That's really the bottom line. Um, you know, if you can do that, it's going to really help my channel grow. But I really want to do that in the future. So help me out. Subscribe if you can. And we will talk to everybody in the future. Peace.